The cold didn't just bite during World War II. It stalked. It hunted. It crippled armies long before the enemy ever fired a shot. And in that brutal freeze, when wool blankets turned to icy slabs and jackets stiffened into boards, soldiers discovered a piece of gear so effective that veterans swore it kept them alive more than any coat ever issued. A simple jacket insert, lighter than wool, tougher than winter itself, and so ahead of its time that most people today don't even realize it existed. But here's the twist. You can recreate it. You can use it. And it still outperforms most modern cold-weather gear. Let's break it down like we're talking one-on-one, -on -one, because this is the kind of history survivalists love. Not stories, but tools. The real reason wool failed when the cold turned deadly. Wool was supposed to be the military's great winter equaliser, warm even when wet, classic insulation, trusted for centuries. But World War II threw wool into conditions far beyond its comfort zone. Bitter wind in the Ardennes. Sub-zero horrors on the Eastern Front. Breath freezing on contact. Snow melting, then refreezing instantly and wool absorbed every drop of it. Once damp, wool blankets became heavy. Once frozen, they were practically armour plates. Soldiers couldn't march properly, couldn't sleep, couldn't keep the cold from crawling under their skin. Wool worked, but only under reasonable conditions. The war wasn't reasonable. The jacket insert fixed that by doing the opposite of what wool did. This insert didn't try to soak up moisture, it kicked it out. Instead of absorbing moisture, the liner's layered structure trapped warm air and let humidity flow outward. Think about that. Wool tries to manage moisture. These inserts rejected it. Every stitch created pockets that held still warm air nature's best insulator, and the cotton shell let sweat escape before it could freeze. That's why a thin liner kept men warmer than a thick wool blanket. It wasn't magic. It was physics. Still, air beats wet fabric every single time. Modern survivalists call this microclimate insulation. World War II engineers just called it standard equipment. This wasn't invented for infantry. It came from the skies. This powerhouse piece of gear was originally designed for pilots sitting in freezing cockpits, where oxygen masks iced over and metal controls sucked heat straight from your bones. Pilots needed warmth without bulk. Mobility without stiffness, and insulation that wouldn't turn to ice at 20,000 feet. The liner delivered. Word spread fast. Infantry units got their hands on them. And from Bastogne to the Volga, soldiers realized this unassuming insert could mean the difference between frostbite and another day alive. The design secretly echoed ancient survival techniques. Here's where things get interesting. The layered approach wasn't new at all. Long before World War II, cultures across colder regions used layered grasses, hides, and loose fibers sewn into garments to trap air. The military unknowingly reinvented what had kept northern peoples alive for centuries. Not by using thick material, but by using multiple thin layers sewn into channels. That's the key. Still air. Controlled insulation. No shifting. No clumping. 
That old-world logic still outperforms many modern winter jackets that rely on bulk instead of design. How you can recreate this liner with basic materials. If you're into bushcraft, reenacting, off-grid living, or just appreciating forgotten engineering, this is where the value kicks in. You can make your own liner, and it will be shockingly effective. To begin, you want to start with a lightweight outer fabric, like cotton muslin or even canvas, if that's what you have on hand. Next, insert layers of batting quilt scraps, or if you're working in primitive field conditions, naturally dried plant fibers will do the trick. Then, you'll want to stitch long channels, these could be vertical zigzag or diamond patterns, to lock the insulation in place. The stitching, really, is what creates those stable warm air pockets that make all the difference. Once you've finished those steps, just close it up. Add a few ties or snaps, whatever you prefer. Then simply slip it under your jacket. The jump in warmth is instant. You'll notice it right away. You'll feel it, honestly, the moment the fabric settles around your core. Your body heat stays exactly where it belongs, instead of just leaking out into the wind. And unlike wool, moisture moves safely outward, rather than freezing right there on your skin. Why this mattered fiercely on the battlefield was, well, really quite simple. Soldiers loved the insert because it worked while moving, sleeping, fighting, digging, or just standing guard. Blankets? They slipped. They froze. They got wet. They required constant adjustment. The insert stayed close, you see. That closeness minimized energy loss, meaning soldiers didn't burn thousands of calories just trying to stay warm. Interestingly, modern survivalists practice the same strategy. A good liner can double the effectiveness of even a cheap jacket, and in some situations it can actually replace a sleeping system if paired with wind protection. That's how practical this knowledge is. This isn't nostalgia, not at all. It's a proven cold-weather survival technique. This gear took abuse like a veteran and just kept going. Men dragged these liners through mud, snow and shattered ruins. They stitched them back together with crude field repairs. They dried them over fires. They slept in them soaked, wore them half-torn and still relied on them day after day. Wool wore out. The liner didn't. Durability is part of what made it legendary. Survivalists today mimic that toughness with canvas shells or tightly woven cotton. Treated properly, these liners can last for years and get warmer with use as the layers settle. Why this forgotten tech still matters today? The brilliance of the World War II jacket insert is that anyone, absolutely anyone, can make one. No fancy tools, no synthetic fabrics, no modern manufacturing, just layers, stitching, and an understanding of how heat behaves. Cold weather campers, off grid enthusiasts, reenactors, and even hunters can apply this. Replace bulky sleeping rolls, boost a lightweight coat, build a compact emergency insulation system. Pack lighter and stay warmer simply by using smarter construction. This is historical knowledge you can actually use right now. And if you want more forgotten methods that still outperform much of today's gear, make sure you subscribe, share this with fellow history lovers, and drop a comment so we can keep digging up the skills that kept our ancestors alive.